Hey everyone, JC here. Today I'm going to build the Game Over Rocket from Custom Rocket Company of Lake Havasu, Arizona. They've been around since 88 and they have a nice selection of rockets. They have two stage, cluster rockets, you name it. So most of the rocket builds are pretty easy, very straightforward. They have a laser or die cut fins, plastic nose cones. I'm going to make a few deviations from the instructions just due to personal preferences. So let's go over the parts list and make sure we have everything. I've already opened the package up. Okay, so the instructions are on one folded sheet of paper. So we got body tube, nose cone, nose cone plug, engine tube, engine clip, centering rings, engine block, launch lug, green plastic streamer, some quarter inch shock cord, some stickers that you have to cut out, and some laser cut fins. Other things that I personally would recommend having are some 100 pound Kevlar string. This is about 24 inches long. Some thin CA glue. Some rough sandpaper. Snap swivel. I like the safety snaps myself. Now, if you have some of these other tools, they'll make your life a lot easier. Um, they have a little guide. I like the fin marking guide. We just plop your body tube right on top of here and mark for either three or four fins. I also like their fin alignment guide. Pretty easy to use. And of course, their ultimate fin mark or body tube marking guide. You gotta I I I lazily wrote the body tube sizes on there so I wouldn't forget. Now, the other thing that I like to use and this is a little file. And we'll show you later. And of course, all the normal things you'd need, hobby knife, rig, uh, wood glue, ruler, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so let's start looking at our instructions. All right, so step 1 is to build the uh, the motor mount. Okay, now what they recommend is they recommend, here's the tube, so it's got a slit already in it for the engine hook. Now they have you put the engine hook in there first before you mark anything. Um, I'm more of the opinion that marking things is easier when you don't have the engine clip on there already. So let's go ahead and get this marked according to the instructions, one half inch from each end. Basic mechanical pencil. Now, I don't normally mark in line with where the slit is, just so that you don't put the engine clip over the top of the uh, marks you just made. Okay. So now that we've got those marked on there, we can go ahead and put in our engine clip. See, and then we want to slide on our first ring here and stop about a quarter of an inch away from your mark because we're going to put some glue on there and then slide it on. Now, before sliding on the upper centering ring, if you just want to do the standard build, you do the same exact thing. Slide it on, put some glue on there. Okay, but I want to use Kevlar because in these short, small rockets, it makes it a lot easier to put the parachute and anything else in there, like altimeter or whatever. If you don't have the trifold, i.e. this thing, shock mount in there, shock cord mount in there. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put a little notch in this upper ring. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can, uh, you can use a hobby knife or, like I said, I like to use a square file. Just because... Um, with your hobby knife, it's too easy to slit the cardboard a little too much. So I'll go ahead and I just get in here and just start filing away. So you can see here, just getting a little notch in there. Oops. As soon as you've got it deep enough, 
for the Kevlar to fit in there. It doesn't have to be super deep, just, just something for the Kevlar to go through. And you can uh, test fit it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so it looks like it'll go through there nicely. Okay. So, before we put on this upper one, before we glue anything in, let's go ahead and put this on here. So, what I like to do is tie it on and then slip it around. So, make a little loop, pass it through like this, put it on the body tube or the engine mount tube. And you can, if you want, you can secure it with a little CA and then pass it over. I'm, I'm going to use a square knot. You can use a double half hitch, whatever you feel appropriate. Okay, we got it on there. Then we'll put that back on. We'll pass the thing around there. Slide it all the way through. Oops. And then rotate it around till we got the Kevlar in the notch, slide it on. Now, I recommend putting the knot on the opposite side of where the uh, engine hook is. Okay. So it should be snug. Okay. And we'll push that past our mark. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and we'll glue this up. Now, obviously we'll want to cut the excess off here. So, use some wood glue. Put that on. I always have to keep a little paper towel here. So let's get some glue on this. Glue this thing up. Like I said, this uh, Kevlar is completely optional. Um, I find it convenient to use. Um, on, especially on smaller diameter rockets. Remember with glue, you don't try not to get it all over the place. It's going to be difficult sometimes. It doesn't matter if you get it on the engine hook. That's fine. Okay, so let's slide it up to the mark. Okay, it should form a nice fillet around there. We'll put some on the other side. And this is you know standard engine mount build, just a little adding a little Kevlar, completely optional. There's one little spot, you know, it doesn't want to glue up. And then if you got any glue on the ring, just go ahead and wipe that off. You can always sand it a little bit later, make sure it fits in. And we want to make sure this is thoroughly dry before you go to put it in, because if it's not, you might get it in part way and then it'll get stuck. Okay, now we'll do the same thing with the upper ring. Slide it up into position. There we go. And then just pull the Kevlar up with it. Ugh, glue, always so messy. That's why I always keep the little paper towel here, otherwise. I'll be gluing stuff all over the place. Okay, so let's put a little glue on the other side. Mm. 
as I said, wipe it off with the outer part of that centering ring. Now one of the things I like to do with any knot that's got Kevlar, is put a little thin CA on it. Because Kevlar doesn't make the tightest knots. Just put a little drop on there. Also, if you're going to cut off Kevlar, like I'm going to cut off the extra part here, I like to put some, Kev uh, some super glue on the Kevlar first. Let it harden, and then cut it off. That way, you have much more likelihood of getting a nice clean end without it fraying. Okay, so get in there. So you see, it cuts off nice clean end. Okay. And if you didn't quite get enough glue on in some place, you know, take a closer look at it. I like to use these little bamboo skewers. They're really good for spreading the glue around. They can get into pointy places, little fine places. All right. Okay, that meets 100% of the JC, JC Perfection Rule. Let's set that aside to dry. I have to get it all over the place, of course. Okay, so the next thing we need to do Step two in the instructions is to mark the body tube. Okay, so you can do this a couple different ways. You can set the body tube on here and mark it your different places. Okay, now you'll notice that there's no place for the launch lug, it just goes between. So if you're going to use this, just, just find a place in the middle, put your body tube on there, put your marks in as appropriate around the three sides of I2. Okay, as I said before, I like to use this little tool from Estes. Just put the body tube on there. Okay, and so it's got marks for, this This rocket has three fins, so you have one there, one there, and one there. So I already made one mark there. So we'll go down to the other three fin mark. Okay, the other one. And then the next thing I do, now you'll notice conveniently this fourth fin mark on the body tube guide is right between these two. So this will be where we're going to put our launch lug. I'm going to put a little L by it. So we know. So we got that all marked. Now, after you've done that, go ahead and use a, a door frame or some other one. Like I, like I said, I like to use this here. Okay, so you put this on here. Now, the one thing that's nice about this is you can take a ruler and put it right in there, line it up. Okay, so uh, our fins, whoops, careful. Looks like the root edge is about one and three eighths of an inch. So take, so this is our fin lines. So we got fin, fin, fin. So we'll start here. And we'll extend those lines up about two inches. So I'm lining up the marker here. And we'll go up about two inches. Rotate it around, do the same thing. About two inches. About two inches. Okay, now for the launch lug, 
According to the instructions, if you look up here in step seven, it says the launch lug goes at three inches. Okay, and our launch lug is one and a half inches long. So we'll make marks between three and four and a half inches. So we'll rotate around to where our launch lug is. And we'll go up one, two, three inches. And we'll step back a little bit. And then we'll go up a little over an inch and a half. Okay. So now we got our body tube. There's our three fin lines. And there's our launch lug line. Now, in the instructions, when you glue on the fins, it'll say, it says way up here in step five, to mark them at three-eighths of an inch from the back end of the body. So let's go ahead and let's put that mark on there now. I mean, while we're marking the two, we might as well get all the mark out of the way. So three-eighths of an inch. It's going to be right here, one, two, three. And that's where the bottom of the fin is going to go. Same thing here. And then the same thing here. Okay. And then our launch lug is three inches. So I like to launch, I like to mark the bottom and the top of the launch lug. So we got three inches. And it's an inch and a half long, four and a half inches. So now the body tube is marked everywhere. We've got the bottom of the thing. If we want to mark the length of the fins, we could do that too. Okay, so the next step would be to glue in the motor mount. That's step three. Now, it's not dry yet, so I'm not, not ready to go ahead and do that. Now, I like to use, as I mentioned, I like to use a fin alignment guide. Oh, this little juby right here. And now it's, this motor is BT50 size motor mount for Toyota Miller. So you can see the body tube will slide right over the top of it. So I like to do that and put the motor mount in later. Now, if you want to glue the motor mount in now, no problem. Go ahead and do that. So the next step is going to be, we're going to skip over gluing the motor mount temporarily. Next step is to prep the fins. Okay. So let's get some of this other stuff out of the way. Interesting alien stickers. Okay. Now I like to do a little sanding on my fins. I like to round the edges. But first, before we cut them out, this, this is a, you can feel the raised grain on here. So let's just, this is a little sanding block. And all you're trying to do here is just like smooth out some of the roughness. No, this is just 220. I'm not trying to make a do anything other than just over here. You feel you can still feel the grain here. It's paper smooth. Okay. Then you're done with that side. Flip over. Same thing. And by sanding against the grain, you can knock off those high spots pretty quickly. Okay, that is some smooth fit. All right. The last thing we need to do is cut them out. And so just use your hobby knife and just cut right in the laser. That's, you'll see there's little nibs here and you just need to cut through. Oh. All right, well, it's pretty easy. So you see this pretty, the, the little nibs are very, very small.
And in fact, okay, we're, we're done. That was pretty easy. Okay, now these little nibs, they need to be sanded off. You'll notice there's these little marks here. This shows you where the root edge is. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to get them all evened up here. And say then we'll use a sanding block. The little nibs are gone. And we'll sand the edges, each one of the edges. And then the ends. All right. Okay. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I like to round my fins. So I'll show you what I'm doing, and then I'll do the rest off camera so you don't fall asleep. So basically, um, just, you know, now you got to be careful because the fin's going to bend this way. So you got to be careful, especially up here where it can snap off. Now I've used various techniques rounding the corner. The problem is if I'm rounding the corner, I'm pushing around the grain. And so I found that just sort of coming along here. Then you can check the profile. And go to the other side. You know, I'm sure everyone has their own technique. Now, do you have to do this? No. Absolutely no requirement to do this. I know people that don't bother. They don't even seal their fins. You know, that's totally up to them. I mean, we'll give it slightly better flight characteristics because the air is flowing around the rounded area rather than hitting a flat surface. But as I said, totally optional. Now, the one thing about laser cut fins is that you'll still be dark with their laser cut so you can see that little line That'll tell you how close you are to actually being at the top. And of course, you want to make it symmetrical if possible. So I need a little bit more off this side. All right, so there's the top done. Move on to the bottom. All right, so there's our fin. Okay, as I said, I'll do the rest of these off camera and then we'll come back when that's all done. Okay, we're back, the fins are all sanded. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna seal them up. See the profile here. Now I use Elmer's Carpenter's wood filler. It's a sort of a putty looking stuff. Um, and then you just thin it with water. I'm going to have to get some more here pretty soon. And it actually keeps pretty well, so you can mix some up and then keep it. And so this is what it looks like when it's mixed with water. It's a, not super liquid, it's pasty like. Now, I don't like to hold the fins because I'm going to suspend. I'm going to hang them up afterwards. So what I usually do is I use these things right here. These are called beading needles. You pick them up at your hobby stop, hobby store, craft store. They're just long, thin needles. I get that one separated out. There we go. I just take a pair of pliers. 
and I just stick them into the root of the fin. Just gotta be careful to get in there nice and straight. There we go. It gives you something to hold on to. You can twirl it around. Just make sure you use the pointy end. It'll be very hard to get the end. There's actually an eyelet on the end of that, if you can hardly believe that. Look. Okay, and the last one. This was a pack of six. I don't remember the brand name, Beetle On or something. But uh, been using them for years. Pack of six is really handy when I built a rocket that had six fins. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, put this on there and then we're going to hang them up. And so you just sort of paint it on there. Okay, just don't put it on the root edge. And you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. Um, I, I think personally that thinner is slightly better um, because you don't have to sand off so much. If you have trouble with rotates in your hand, you can just use a pair of pliers. To hold on to it like this. So don't put it on the root edge, as I said. You know, if you find out it's a little too thick, just go ahead and uh, thin it off with a little water. Generally, this only requires one coat. At least that's now. If you make the make it really thin, you might require two. Now, if you see if it's real thick, you'll see how thick that is on there. You want to thin that out, otherwise you'll be sanding forever, trying to get it down to just above. Basically, you want to get it down to just above where the grain is when you sand it. Okay, so I'm, since I'm sure that no one is interested in watching me put this on the other two fins, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do that part off camera. Okay, that looks pretty good. And so it's coated all the way around. Oops, I guess I didn't. I spoke too soon. There we go. All right, so I'll do the other ones off camera, and then we'll get back to this after those are done. Okay, so the fins are busily drying, and so the next step would be normally to put the fins on. But before we do that, let's go ahead and roughen up the tube a little bit. So we'll do the launch lug here first. So I marked the bottom and top of where the launch lug is. We'll just take a little sandpaper, and then right along that line, just give it a... You don't have to cut deep, just all you're trying to do is get rid of that glossiness that's on the body tube. And if you look at it, you can see it's shiny. Then there's a dull line where I sanded. And then we'll do the same thing for the fins. Now, if you happen to sand the line off completely, then you might want to draw it. But that's one of the reasons you always draw the line a little bit farther than you need to. So you have a visual sighting of where the fins let's go. That's why you also want to mark the body tube at the bottom. Okay, and last one. All right, so that's all sanded. Now we can go on to look at the motor mount. We can check the glue. Is the glue dry? Not quite. Also, if you missed any spots, looks like I missed a spot right there, you can always take the opportunity to put a little more glue on there to your satisfaction. Now with glue, a lot of times less is more. It doesn't take a ton of glue 
to glue something in place. Okay. One of the things I like to do is use these little skewers, as I mentioned before, because you can just get in there and you can put the glue right where you want it. Very handy. Better than a cotton applicator than anything like a huge mess, at least in my mind. Okay, looks like a little bit here. As always, you know, try to avoid getting it on the outside of the centering rings. This will be a nightmare later. Okay, those all look good. Okay. Now, one of the other things we need to do here is, since we're going to attach the elastic shot cord to the end of the Kevlar shot cord, one of the things we want to do is we want to put a, a loop in the end here. We can just use a simple overhand loop. There. Turn it around your finger. There we go. And like this. All right, we got it. It doesn't have to be real big, just big enough for the elastic to fit in. Now, as always, a little bit extra. See, I would cut this off, and so I'll do what I did before. A little thin CA along the line where I want to cut it. It doesn't have to be a whole enough, just enough to soak into the threads. Okay. Because you know, it's important to minimize the amount of extra things you have sticking out all over the place. Now you can see that this is going to be long enough, once you put it inside the body tube, it'll stick all the way out the other end. Okay, plenty of length. If you want to put a little glue on that knot, no problem, you can do that too. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I said Kevlar, it's very difficult to get a really tight knot with Kevlar. Um, one of the things you can do, I've seen this on other YouTube channels, is uh, once you get the elastic on there, you can put some heat shrink over the whole thing, help protect the end of the elastic. But since it's going to be all the way outside the body tube, probably not a problem. So while we're waiting for that, let's talk a little bit about the shock cord. So this is the provided shock cord. Now this thing is pretty thick. It's quarter of an inch. It's really, I mean, it's, it's a good length considering the size of this rocket. It's a little about two and a half times as long as the rocket, not bad. Now, this is a little big for me, uh, mainly because just that much more stuff to stick in there. So um, if you wanna use this, no problem. I'm not going to. Uh, I would recommend you use probably this size right here, which is 3 16 or you could even use some eighth. I just happen to have, so here's a piece of, of eighth inch. This is a rubber band type, but you could use that just as well. It's gonna be pretty much out of the way. So you can use either one. Okay, so uh, we can cut that Kevlar off now. And you see, it gives you a super nice ed, end. Okay, so let's finish that drying. Get out of the way. Let's move on to some other things. So, nose cone. So, this is a plastic nose cone. It's actually quite a nice nose cone. It's very smooth. Um, you'd probably want to rough this up um, if you're going to paint it. Now, this particular rocket has a black nose cone, so you don't necessarily need to. It's a silver body black nose cone. And so we're going to glue this in here. Now you can use model cement or you could use a, a thicker CA. Now an important consideration is with a CA, it's an expanding type glue. So if you have a very smooth surface, it doesn't have anything to bite onto, it will stick, but it won't be super strong, which seems weird for CA, but um, it needs moisture and there's no moisture in this plastic, right? So it's going to draw it out of the air. So what you really want to do before you glue it, if you use CA, 
is you want to rough this up. I mean, I recommend roughing it up anyway. So just get in here. This is some coarse sandpaper. Just, you know, go around. Okay, see that? And then same thing on this. Oops. This will give the glue some ridges to bite into, so to speak. Okay. All right. And then we'll use this thicker CA, it's gel type. And then we'll uh, run a bead around the inside here. I mean, you, don't, you, don't have, you don't have to put a whole lot. Okay, and then just go ahead, put it in there, give it a twist, set it aside. And I can go back there in 30 seconds. And that thing is not coming out. Okay, so, so we got our nose cone all done. Now, if you want to use the trifold instead of the Kevlar, up to you. What I did was I, I made a whole bunch of these a million years ago, so I don't have to cut my instructions up. Instructions. So the instructions have one in there, just like with, like with SDs and other, other ones. You can just cut it out. I prefer not to cut my instructions up, so I just made a bunch of these. And you can see that this is almost identical in size. So now would be a time to go ahead and put that in there. I'm, I'm gonna do it, but obviously the way you do this is you, I like to pre-fold it. Okay, then you lay it out. Like I said, I'm gonna use some thinner And then you put some glue on here, lay this down at a slight angle, fold it over, fold it over. Once it's all glued, put it inside the rocket. Now, if you're annoyed with me because I'm not going to do it this way, well, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things. Um, and the problem is that you can't really do it and then also undo it at the same time. One thing we can do, which I forgot, is to put in the engine block. Okay. So, engine block just fits right in here. And uh, to be honest with you, I completely forgot about putting it in. And of course, now I can't get it out. And as, as always, glue gets everywhere. Now, one thing about gluing this in, okay, you're going to glue it in until it basically touches the engine hook. Don't use a ton of glue because you don't want a big old ring of glue inside there blocking where the engine makes it hard to get it to fit in. I mean, what I would recommend you do is rough up the inside of the tube just a little. And the outside block just a little. The reason to do this is there's not a whole lot of surface area. So when you rough it up, you actually give it some extra surface area. So put a little more glue here. A little glue thing. And I'll take, I'm going to take the butt end of my uh, skewer. Put it in there. Just a thin coating is fine. It doesn't need to be a big old thick blob in there. Now this will set up fairly quickly, so 
you know, don't spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out how to get it in there. Just, you know, once you get it in, get it in and slide it in there. And then you press down on it. There, there we go. Okay, so forgotten step fixed. Then you want to look down inside. There's a nice thin ring of glue there, not a big one. Nice thin ring of glue. All right. All right, so we are now pretty much ready to go. We're just waiting on the fins to dry so we can sand them. The other part, like I said, if you want to mount the shock cord, now would be the time. One of the things I do recommend when you're mounting your shock cord, once you get it all inside the shock cord mount, let's say that, you know, Here's the edge of it right there. The, the, the instructions say to put it in an inch and a half. Well, here's what I recommend that you do. You know, measure it. And then put a mark with a pencil or a pen or something. And when you're putting it in, just make sure that that mark is at or inside the body tube, at the edge or inside the body tube. All right, well, we'll come back when the fins are dry and we're ready to put them on. All right, now that all the fins are sealed, they've been sanded, and basically using this particular sealer, you sand them down until you just start seeing the grain. And then that will do pretty well. Usually one coat or maybe two coats of paint and it'll be nice and glossy. Okay, next step is to put the fins on. So we already sanded the body tube, appropriate places. So we basically, the only thing we have left to do is glue the fins on, finish the shock cord mount, launch lug, and then put the engine mount in the body tube. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the root edge of the fin Okay, and then we're going to put it on the body tube, touch it to the body tube, and then we're going to pull it off, let the glue dry for about 30 seconds or so, put it back on, check the alignment. Now, since I'm going to use the fin alignment guide, after I do that, I'm going to put it on the fin alignment guide. All you have to do if you don't want to use the fin alignment guide is just make sure that it's straight. So, once again with glue, less is more, just, just enough to put a little bit on the root here. I just dab it with my finger. All you want is just a light coating. Can you line up the fin at the bottom here? Up there on the line. Okay, take it off. Wait for about 30 seconds or so. What we're doing here is we're letting the glue get tacky so when we put the fin back on, it won't just fall over. Right, we're basically gluing the glue to itself. I mean, you can also do the same thing by actually putting a light coating on there, letting it dry, and then putting more glue on there. Same, same kind of thing. Okay, well, that was my version of 30 seconds, so let's, let's get this on here. Okay, slide down the body tube. Make sure it's on the squin, on the fin, on the body tube squarely okay then we move on to the next one okay like i said just a little bit of glue here Just remember not to put it on the launch lug line. That's when we marked with an L here. That's why we didn't draw it down here. I only drew it up there. Okay. Put it on there. Take it off. Wait whatever your version of 30 seconds is. You know, 15, 30, 45. Don't wait too long or else it'll just get dry and hard. 
and then you'll have to put some more glue on there. We just, just want it to get tacky. Put it back on, do the same thing. Make sure it's straight with the body tube. It's off just a tiny bit. Yep, there we go, looks good. No more glue, next fin. Luckily, it only has three fins, so this goes pretty quickly. And they don't have huge root edges. They don't weigh very much, so they're not likely to topple over. Okay, with this third fin on here. Now, as I said, after I get done on there, so the glue is still it's still tacky. I'm going to put it on the fin guide. An alignment guide, and then we're going to use that. That's why I didn't put the motor mount in. You know, if you wanted to put motor mount in already, that's not a problem. Go ahead. I mean, you know, the whole thing about rocket building is, you know, whatever works for you. You know, there is no rule that says you have to do it the way the instructions say or the way someone else says to do it. All right. So well, now I'm going to put this on here. This is pretty simple to use. Okay, you just put your body tube on there. Slide it down. Rotate it around till the fins are lined up. And then put the flat edge to the fin and this part on the plastic. Just like that. And the last one. Then double check that you got the fin pressed up against it because it can pull away a little bit. Now, is this thing foolproof? Nope, not even close. But you know, I feel that it's got that it works pretty well. That way. Then I take a last little look down there. It looks pretty straight to me. We'll set that off to the side. Okay, then we'll go and we'll finish up the shock cord. Now, if you want at this time, you could also uh, glue on the uh, launch lug. I'm not going to do it because it's kind of in the way. I'll do that in just a minute. Let those get set up a little bit more. So in preparation for installing the motor mount, <clears throat> I've passed the Kevlar back through the uh, motor mount tube. That when we slide it in, it won't be in the way. So we want to connect our shock cord, and this is 1 8 inch uh, elastic. It's about two feet long. Okay, and we're going to tie it through that loop we made. And once again, you tie any kind of knot you want. Um, double half hitch works good here. Which a lot of people tie a double half hitch and don't even know they're tying a double half hitch. Some people call this a double knot. Same difference, I guess. And we'll cut the excess off. Now... It's, a, it's up to you. I don't recommend putting any glue in this knot. I know that some people do. The problem is, is that when the glue dries, it's going to be stiff, and it's also going to shrink. Okay, That's going to cause internal friction here with the little pieces of elastic, and it can cause the knot to fail. So I don't do that, but, you know, hey, whatever you want. We'll cut off the excess. 
Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a snap swivel on the end of this. Now this will this will snap right on to the bottom of the body too, or the nose cone. Excuse me. That way you can remove the nose cone if you want. We'll just have, this is called the safety snap swivel because it's got this little edge here. Some people tape over those. I never had any problems with it, so I don't bother. So we just gonna do the same exact thing, just like passing it through a loop here. Now you can get all kinds of different sizes. The most important thing is that this part right here, the snap part, has to comfortably fit on this. You don't want it cocked over at an angle or anything. It's not gonna be perfect because this is round. And then we'll just do the same thing, the old double half hitch. Then we'll cut off the excess. Now don't cut too close to the knot because you're talking about something that's stretchy so it could pull out. So that, that's good enough. You're talking you know, maybe a quarter of an inch here. That is a tight knot. That's another tight knot. Not going to have any problems with that. Okay, so we're going to pass it into the body tube from the bottom and then we'll pull it out the top later. So that's plenty of length. So if you were to later on, say, put a payload section on there that weighs a lot more, you're still going to have uh, plenty of stretch on that, not a problem. Okay, so now that the glue on the fins is starting to harden up, now we can go ahead and put that launch lug on there. Get it out of the way. So what I'm going to do is we're going to roughen up the launch lug just a little bit. Once again, no need to uh, extensively stand. We're just, we're just taking the shininess off just a little bit. Okay. Uh, the only difference here is we're not going to put it on and take it back off, right? Because it's so small, the odds of it doing anything are pretty tiny. So, so we're going to put it on here against the bottom. Oops, top. And this is why you want to extend the line above and below where the launch lug goes on. And so I'm going to look down the tube. And because the tube is hollow and the because there's no motor mount in there, this all I can see right perfectly down there and it's perfectly aligned. All right, so we are almost done. The last thing we're going to have to do is install the motor mount, put the fillets on the fins and on the launch lug. So as soon as the fins are dry, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put the fillets on, get those dry, and the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the motor mount. Okay, so the glue on the fins is dry, as well as the launch lug, so we can go ahead and remove the rocket from the fin guide. Okay, move that out of the way. Pretty good. Okay, it's time to put some fillets on there. Looks like one of my fins got pushed a little off line. But Oh, it's because the tube isn't quite round, I see. Oh, well. It should be okay. Considering some of the rockets I built when I was a kid, I'm surprised they even fly. So, we're just going to put a thin layer of glue along the root edge. And then we'll smooth it out with our finger. Now the important thing here is don't put a big old glob on there, but a nice thin line will smooth out. Okay. 
Of course, they promptly put a big old glob on there. Now, I don't usually take it because it's all big. It's a big mass now, so I don't usually put that on the next side of the fin. You know, some people do that. That's fine. I mean, like with anything with building a rocket, I mean, your way is the right way. I mean, everybody has their own way of doing things. If you're comfortable with doing things a certain way and it works for you, okay. I mean, the one thing about it, you get a little extra glue someplace, you yeah, sand it off. Of course, you can't, can't avoid getting glue all over the place. Now, one of the things I like to do is make sure that there's glue at the very front of each fin. So what I usually do is I put a little glue on my paper towel. It's got all kinds of little pieces of glue all over it. Then I take the pointy end of my skewer. Put a little glue up there. Then do the same thing at the aft end of each one of these fins. Just want to make sure you have a nice all joint. Now, if you see an air bubble, you want to pop that thing. Now, remember, white glue shrinks. Wood glue, white glue, it's going to shrink. So, if there's a little gap, you might end up with a little bubble or a little dimple in your glue. That's fine. Just after everything dries, go back in. If you see it forming, a little bubble or something, then go ahead, you know, pop the bubble, get some glue in there. Okay, so that's good. Now we'll do the same thing with the launch lug. Now I have the most problem with little bubbles forming on a launch lug. Because the way the because the, the launch lug is rounded, so if you put the glue in very slowly, that will help alleviate that problem. I just cannot keep from putting my finger in that glue. This is a good thing I'm not a professional uh, rocket builder. Amateur at best, I would say. I have built a lot of rockets over the years. Probably, I don't know, 40 or 50, maybe more. Still have most of them. Uh, occasionally, I did have a fairly significant loss earlier this year when my high flyers went off on a journey and unfortunately took my flight sketch mini with it. But that's the way things go. Hopefully, one of these days, 
flight schedule get back into the production business now if you get a little extra glue on something you can wet your finger okay so and you can always sand it off from 220 320 something like that okay so I think we're good here we got some fillets all the way around we got glue at the top of each fin the bottom of each fin okay so you can either wait till this dries or you can glue in the motor mount right now and so I'm gonna go ahead and glue in the motor mount right now since it's you know otherwise I have to sit and wait for this to dry now the motor mount is gonna go in here all the way till this is glue. so we're talking about just beyond the fins here so what we can do is we can take a quick measurement so it's gonna be about right there so I'm just going to take my pencil, make a little mark, double check. Oh, you should always double check. That's a little far, actually. And we're going to put a blob of glue here. We'll put it right there, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a blob of glue on here. Move my fingers up to about where that is. Rotate it around so I keep the glue. There we go. And then we'll just put it on there like this. And we'll do the same thing. Put another one in there. And the good thing is that even without seeing it, you can feel when you got glue all the way around. Now, it also recommends that you put some glue on this ring. So what I'm going to do real quickly... get the glue to come out there we go because so I'm going to put a little glue right on the leading edge of that of that ring so it'll smear it over the top of the ring and there I mean you can try and put it in part way and then put the glue in there and it is a huge pain to do that Okay, so I'm going to line up the engine hook opposite of there. So we're going to slide that in. You can see that it's not quite round. And then we're going to push it in until it's even. And then I'll just wipe off this excess of glue. Try not to get the shock cord in it. Okay. All right. Well, of course, maybe I should touch it with a glue finger. Now, since this rock is really short, you're not really going to have to worry about the glue migrating down the tube and the fins. So what we'll do is we'll set that aside to dry. And then the next step we'll go up to is we'll attach the streamer. Okay. And so the streamer is about, well, I think it's four feet long. Let's see here. Okay, it's about four and a half feet long. Little little step electricity there. This actually tells you tie it to the nose cone. I'm not a big fan of that. If I was going to tie it to something, what I would probably do is take a little piece of Kevlar cord make a lanyard for it we can look at that later so after everything gets dry we'll look into different ways to attach the streamer to the rocket um, I'm a big snap swivel fan so I'll show you a methodology that I use to uh, add a snap swivel to the streamer all right well we'll come back all right we're on the last part of the build here so glues all dry our shock cord mounts all done and the last thing we need to do is recovery system now the recovery system for this rocket is a streamer as we talked about before so they have you tying it to the nose cone well I hate to tie anything to anything if I can avoid it that's why I put the snap swivels on my shock cord 
and I put snap swivels on my parachutes or my streamers. Okay. You don't have to do this. You can tie it to the nose cone if you want. The problem is, is that means that you're constantly having to mess with something that's attached directly to the nose cone. What I recommend is putting a little lanyard on it. So I've cut a five inch piece of Kevlar and I have another snap swivel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce the end here by folding it over. And I'm going to fold it diagonally. A little trickier than it seems. And I'm going to fold it the other way. Oh, that didn't. As I said, it's a little harder than it looks. Let me if I set it down. Okay. I'm going to fold it back over. So we have multiple thicknesses here of material. And then I'm going to secure it with a little masking tape. Now I'm not going to use painter's tape because I want something that's going to have a little more stick to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it over here. I'm going to fold over the edges. But first, I'm going to trim away the tape right here at the point. Okay, down here. So we're going to fold this down over here like this, and this down over like this. Okay, so now we have a nice thick piece. And so now I'm going to use a hole punch. I'm going to punch a little hole in here. Now this is the same hole punch that I use when I'm going to put holes in a body tube for, uh, I always say decimeter for some reason because I wore them for so many years, uh, for an altimeter. So I'm just going to put a punch, punch a hole right here. Okay. So now we have a nice hole backed up with tape through multiple thicknesses of this. Okay. And now we're going to tie on our piece of Kevlar. And as before, double half hitch or square knot, you know, whatever you want to tie works good. And as I said before, I highly recommend putting a little thin CA on this knot. Because Kevlar just just not really a knot type material. Try not to get it on anything else. You don't need a whole bunch, just a drip. Oh, I got a drip on there. There we go. There we go. All right, and then just uh, you know. A little glue on this. We'll cut that nub off the end. Okay. And while that's drying, we'll tie the other end to a snap swivel. Same kind of deal. Pull the knot tight. Put a little CA on there. A little down here, we'll cut it off. You can see, no fraying, no anything. Works really well. that over. All right. 
Okay. So this rocket is now done. All except for the painting. Okay. And according to the card, it's a black nose cone. It's got some stickers and then it's got a silver body and fins. Okay. So pretty simple paint job. After you get it all painted, you're going to want to cut your stickers out and put them on there. Now, they give you four fin stickers for three fins, so I'm not really sure what the logistics are of putting that on there. But they give you two game over, so I assume one on each side, and then you do a wrap around the top. So after I get this painted, I'll show you what it looks like, put the stickers on there, and then we'll be 100% done. Okay. And so all we have to do is just snap these on here. I'm not going to paint the nose cone black. It's already a nice black color. If I was going to paint it, then I would have to sand it down to make sure the paint stuck and then paint it black again where it's already a nice shiny black. So we have a recovery system all done. Shock cord. Rocket. Okay. So next stop is the paint booth. Okay, Rocket is back from the paint booth. I put all the stickers on there. So we got our wrap at the top, game over on both sides. And then there's four of these little stickers. I put two on this fin here, one there, you can do whatever you want. There's four of them, so you can put two on one fin, one on each of the others, however. Okay. To launch this, very simple, put in a motor, Put in some wadding, and then just take your shock cord. You know, this is how I do it. Other people may do it differently. I like to wrap this up, put it in here. One of the things that's nice about using a shock cord mount that's attached on the engine is that you don't have one in here blocking anything. Now, I pre-folded pre, uh, this because the stack of electricity was causing it to go everywhere. So once you get it to about this size or maybe this size, then just roll it up. Put in the tube, follow it up with the nose cone. And of course the shock cord will fight you at every turn. All right, there we go. Game over. All built, ready to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll do some more in the future. Like I said, this is from Custom Rocket Company. It's a skill level one rocket. Um, they have a lot of nice little rockets. I highly recommend if you're trying to make your fleet a little bit larger without breaking the bank. These things cost typically less than $10 on sale. Some places have them on there for 6 or $7. Um, they're really good flyers, and I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching.